Wee, 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 wee. Uh, I scared you. All right, guys. Well, I'm here back in New York, baby. Back from the COVID vacation. Uh, you know, feeling good, feeling pretty good. Uh, out in the beautiful snow here in the East Village. We'll be doing a story of the dark side of the East Village, this neighborhood. Great place. I used to live here. No big deal. Uh, gonna try to just kind of suffer the elements here. I have some shoes that are a little, you know, a little, uh, a little outdated, but, uh, you know, that brings me to my next point. <laughs> Check out the Patreon. <laughs> I could use some new shoes. Uh, Patreon, you get some extras on there, whatever, check it out. Uh, also, too, subscribe. If you see more than one of these videos, just subscribe already. Good Lord, helps me out a lot. Not very hard to do, and like the thing. Give it a little thumbs up, bumps it in the old YouTube thing, gets me pumped up ahead of all those cats falling in cardboard boxes and videos like that. So, anyways, that's pretty much all the business. Uh, Eric, how the hell are you, huh? Doing great. Good. I'm ready, man. I'm ready. It was a nice little vacation. I'm here in Astor Place. We got a nice, uh, some crazy stories here, man. The East Village got a lot of crazy stories, so uh, I think we should just get started, man. Uh, how was your vacation, by the way? How rude of me to not ask. It's doing pretty good. Uh, your vacation's doing pretty good? It's ongoing. It's always. ongoing, huh? Your whole life is a vacation. Not enough dark side, though. Not enough dark side. Well, you're about to get a whole lot of it today, so uh, I don't know, man. You think we should just get started? No, Let's do it, baby. Check out my sick gloves, huh? I got these at uh, some little shop here in, uh, you know, in St. Mark's in the East Village where they also do tattooing and body piercing. I got these and it's freezing outside. That's why I did it. But we're, we're out here anyway because uh, we love you. <laughs> Anyways, I'm at our first stop and this is in Tompkins Square Park. We're in front of the General Sloka Memorial Fountain. Uh, this is to commemorate the victims of a disaster that happened in 1904 which everyone who's been to New York or has even thought of New York should know about because it's one of the biggest tragedies in New York history. Anyways, the story goes that, first of all, this neighborhood used to be Klein Deutschland, huh? There was a huge wave of Klein Deutschland. That's right. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Eh. Anyways, uh, this used to be Klein Deutschland. A lot of uh, Germans came here starting in the mid-1800s and it became Little Germany by the end of the 1800s. And there was a church right near here uh, a Lutheran church that uh, on June 15th, 1904, was doing its yearly end of school year picnic. Uh, 1,358 mostly women and children poured onto the General Slocum steam paddle boat. One of those things like, you know, the paddles on the side to go up the East River to the Long Island Sound uh, to go for a little uh, picnic at Locust Grove. Big deal, it's a real fun time. Everyone's super excited. All the kids that finished school, they're all talking with each other like, oh, Scheiss, uh, Ursula looks so heiss uh, in her leader holes. And uh, I, I guess that was pretty bad. Sorry, I guess they're, they're Canadian now. Uh, anyways, they're German kids, all the German moms. Everyone's happy and excited. They get on the boat, they start heading up the East River, right? Up, just as they get to like the 90s, up, you know, like the 90th Street area, they start seeing that there's a fire. Uh, smoke's billowing out. Uh, the, the actual, the Captain William Van Shake actually tries to, to dock somewhere and says that he was waved away because they didn't want the whole dock to be burnt to a crisp. So he starts heading towards North Brother Island. Uh, big mistake. He actually runs aground uh, and uh, everyone's just basically burning to death. Uh, people are jumping from the, you know, are jumping from the, uh, the, the, the boat and, uh, you know, and also the, the equipment was defective. The, the, the ships, the ships, uh, lifeboats were defective. The life jackets were defective. Mothers would throw their babies in life jackets and kids in their life jackets into the water and watch them sink to the ground. No, a lot of people couldn't swim. So people were just basically pulling each other down as complete pandemonium and everyone was watching it. From the, from the actual island of Manhattan, just seeing this happen in the water is nothing you could do. Bodies wash up on shore for days, and at the end of the day, 1,021 people died, mostly women and children, and mostly German people from this neighborhood. Crazy, right? And all of that happened because of this guy, William Van Shake, and his decision to head towards North Brother Island. Do you know what I mean? It was one of the worst disasters in New York history, the worst loss of life in a single day in New York history before 9-11, uh, and it was all, 
what devastated this neighborhood. In fact, this neighborhood uh, kind of disappeared. A lot of the Germans moved to either Brooklyn or Yorkville in the Upper East Side, uh, Midtown area. So. Uh, Pretty terrible, and this is all the General Slocum uh, disaster. Uh, the, the actual captain was uh, convicted of criminal negligence since the 10 years, but he only served four because William Howard Taft pardoned him. Uh, you know, what can you do? It's pretty sad, it all happened on the General Slocum on uh, June 15th, 1904. I don't know, that whole, uh, that whole story gives me the uh, steamboat willies, <laughs> if you will. That was, was that bad? No. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, that uh, joke was a tragedy in itself. Uh, but on that note, let's head to the next stop. What do you think, Eric? Let's do it. Do you forgive me for the Steamboat Willies thing? Uh, I'll work on it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, well, I'm here now at 77 East 3rd Street, which used to be the home up until 2019 of the headquarters of the Hells Angels. In case you don't know, the Hells Angels are a motorcycle gang that started in California in the late 1940s. A guy who'd come back from World War II, rode around in his Harley. He actually defected from his motorcycle gang, which was called the Pissed Off Bastards. That was the name of his gang. I'm sure their arch rival was the fuming dickheads or something. But he starts his own gang called the Hells Angels. Ah, no apostrophe on the S, by the way. They don't care about punctuation. Hells Angels, right? It's actually present in almost 60 countries around the world, hundreds of charters, but this was the headquarters here in New York from 1969 until 2019. And in front, people would park their bikes, and this was actually, believe it or not, when the East Village was a terrible neighborhood, this block was pretty safe because they kind of kept, kept the uh, you know, peace here, if you will. But in this building and around this building have happened a lot of things. In fact, in 1978, the boss, the president of the chapter here, uh, president is such a funny, they actually had like titles. <laughs> I'm the treasurer of the, anyways, the president, his name was Vinnie Girolamo. He pushed his girlfriend off the roof uh, and she died when she fell down. Uh, so that's pretty nuts. He actually didn't make it to trial because he was stabbed uh, about a year later. Uh, go figure, his actually, his, his motto, which was actually on a plaque here until recently was, when in doubt, knock him out. That's a pretty good motto. Uh, you know, <laughs> not really well thought out, but you know, he got stabbed for it. Uh, so things like that happened. Uh, people get into fights here all the time. In fact, uh, in 2016, there was a Mercedes Benz driving through at about 1.20 a.m. A bunch of 20 year old dudes, a bunch of bros uh, moved a cone that they had put out here to keep their bikes, uh, you know, parking spaces. You know, no one's too uh, tough to save a parking space in New York. But anyways, one of these guys moves the cone, guy comes out, they start fighting and everything. A bunch of dudes pour out of the Mercedes, they start a big brawl. And uh, the main guy, his name's David, uh, the bro, got shot. He got shot right here in the front over a parking spot in front of the Hells Angels. He's taken to the hospital, he survived. So all these kind of crazy things happen right here. Um, and in fact, right nearby in East Village, there was a bombing in 1970 at the Electric Circus, which was Andy Warhol's nightclub at the time. Uh, and they said that it might have been the Hells Angels then, so lots of stuff happened around the neighborhood credited to the Hells Angels who were here in this building. There was, a, you know, I think like 16 apartments in the building uh, that they used as kind of crash pads uh, and where I'm sure they, you know, drank Fanta and played charades uh, and stuff like that, but uh, it was all right here in this building up until 2019 uh, when they were like, yeah, we've had it with the neighborhood, it's, you know, not worth it, uh, and they've moved now to the Bronx. Uh, which is now, brings me to the saying of the, the motto of the neighborhood now, which is, when in doubt, price them out. So they fell victim. Well, 2019, from 1969, they had a decent run. All right, pretty cool. Hells Angels headquarters right here. It's already being like worked on the facade. It's changed a lot. They used to have their skull and everything right there. Not anymore. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go down to the next location. You ready? Ready. All right, look at that. Nice little uh, spot here with a little tea uh, to tell you the next story here at 700 East 9th Street. This is the story of Daniel Rakowitz. Uh, so this guy's story, and also too, a very grisly murder, <laughs> you know, stay tuned. So anyways, he moves here in the 1980s. He's a total like drifter and psycho. Uh, he, he hangs out a lot in Tompkins Square Park uh, and he actually started his own cult 
Uh, no one joined it because the guy had no charisma. And, you know, starting a cult with no charisma is like trying to become a basketball player when you're only five feet tall and have no limbs. But anyways, the guy uh, moves in here with a couple. Uh, they eventually want to move in together in a new place. So uh, they want to leave it to him on the, on the uh, lease, but they're not going to give it to him. The lease isn't going to be transferred to him because the guy's a nobody. He's a drifter, a loser, whatever. Luckily for him, he meets a woman in Tompkins Square Park named Monica Bierl. Right? She's a Swedish dancer. Huh? She danced at two of the finer dancing institutions in New York, Martha Graham and Billy's Topless in Chelsea. Uh, and she moves in. And the, you know, the, the couple actually thought she had her eye on the apartment because he wanted to sign her onto the lease so he was able to get the apartment, which he did. Go figure, a couple weeks after she moves in at the beginning of August, she uh, tries to kick him out. Oh, yeah, love, love lasted very short, short-lived love there, only a few weeks. He's freaking out. He doesn't want to be homeless again. He doesn't, he doesn't know what to do. Uh, and he murders her. He strangles her in the apartment here, right? That's not where it ends. What he also did was he started dismembering her in the bathtub. He, he uh, took her head off and boiled it and made a soup and ate it. And if that wasn't bad enough, he went down to Tompkins Square Park and fed the homeless people in Tompkins Square Park the soup made from this Swedish dancer's head. Yeah, that's pretty disgusting. I'm sure some of the people who were there were eating and they're like, hmm, is this a Swedish meatball? You bet it was. <laughs> that's a little grim, huh? So Daniel Rakowitz killed Monica Biro here in this apartment because he was so scared of being booted and being homeless again, which shows you the lengths that people here in New York will go for their apartments. Murdering someone, decapitating them, and eating soup made out of their body. Yeah, I'm sure people have done worse to keep a well-located apartment. So the guy gets arrested, uh, is not guilty of murder because of way of insanity, and goes into a, uh, you know, a asylum and all that. Uh, but the story continues to haunt the East Village to today. Daniel Rakowitz, the cannibal of the East Village here at 700 Ninth Street. Mm, kind of crazy, huh? What do you think of that, Eric? I, uh, I could use like some nice dog B-roll or something. Yeah, we could put some dog B-roll in here to make it a little, uh, a little more uh, palatable, you know? All right, well, I guess that's kind of the story here. So maybe we should just head to the next spot, huh? All right, we're at our next stop here at Abe Liebewall Park. Okay, so this park is named after a man named Abe Liebewall who opened the Second Avenue Deli right across the street where that Chase Bank is located. He opened it in 1954. He was an immigrant. He came here, uh, his dad was shipped off to Siberia. He was a Holocaust survivor. Can you imagine being his son complaining about anything? Dad, I can't concentrate in social studies. Oh, really? Well, I survived Auschwitz, shut up. But anyway, he's a real tough guy, right? So he comes here, he opens the Second Avenue Deli in 1954, becomes the mayor of Second Avenue, it becomes a really popular spot. It originally was uh, 10 seats and it grew to 250 seats. Uh, people like Joe DiMaggio, Joan Rivers, Muhammad Ali, Bob Hope, those were some of the people that came through this place. But on March 4th, unfortunately, 1996, he was gunned down in broad daylight uh, in the morning uh, so what happened was he came at 7 a.m. like he normally did, started set everything up, and he was taking the, ne the previous day's deposits to deposit them at his bank further south down 2nd Avenue uh, around 4th Street. And apparently what happened was he got out of the car and two people were already waiting for him. They pushed him back in the car and shot him uh, and drove off. And they abandoned the car on 1st Avenue and that is where he staggered out of the car, apparently, and fell to the sidewalk, uh, saying that he had been shot. Uh, and he died that day, 64 years old, Abe Liebewall, who was a very popular neighbor uh, here to the people in the East Village. Uh, he was known to give the homeless people free meals. He had, he had given uh, money to his uh, employees to help whenever they needed it. A really good guy. Uh, and. Uh, his actual nephews took over the restaurant uh, until 2006 when they moved to a different part of New York, but it's still around actually in Midtown. Uh, they have a second Avenue Deli, really good actually. Uh, I really recommend it. Uh, and today, unfortunately, uh, to add insult to injury, the spot where his 
deli was located is a bank, uh, a chase, a chase bank. Uh, and the reason they left was because the rent got so high. Their rent was, was gonna be raised from $24,000 a month to $33,000 a month. Uh, yeah, it looks like banks killed the uncle and the restaurant, unfortunately. Uh, but all this here area is, is, I guess, the site of what was what is still a cold case. They never found uh, Abe Leibowitz's killers, unfortunately. And today, they've just recently, a couple years ago, reopened the case, uh, and they're offering $150,000 for any information linked to that murder. So, if you have any information uh, linked to Abe Leibowitz's uh, murder, uh, please uh, let me know, and I will uh, see to it that the correct uh, authorities get that information. Uh, yeah. <sighs> well, here I am on the East River, totes cash, <laughs> just leaning here next to a bench. No big deal. Uh, yeah, we made it through the entire little, uh, little neighborhood here, told some crazy little dark stories. Uh, you know, I actually did a video on these village, so if you really want to learn more about the history and all that, you want to check that, that video out. Uh, yeah, never too late for one of those, but uh, yeah, I'm over here next to the East River. Not really anything in particular, you know, grisly to talk about over here, except for the fact that, uh, you know, if you gave me a nickel for every dead body that's been found in the East River, you'd be a pretty sick freak. Uh, you should find something better to do with your money than give people money for dead bodies. Uh, but you get my drift. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. You can see over across the river there, there's Brooklyn. Uh, it's Williamsburg, you know, Domino Sugar Factory. Uh, I, could go, I could go on. <laughs> they actually were the ones who invented the sugar packet back in the day. It's now a park, fancy park. You can see all the fancy condos over here now. That's a whole other video. I'll get into that as well uh, in the future. But anyways, before I, before I digress too much, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Eric, did you enjoy the video? I did enjoy the video. Some crazy stuff, huh? Yeah. Well, there's more videos coming. I've done a few of these dark side videos. I think there's a few more to do. You people seem to be uh, fix, fixated on, uh, on all the dark stuff. So uh, I just got rained on by the snow. So it wasn't a tomato. Yeah, no one's throwing tomatoes at me yet. Uh, but. Uh, got more coming and then uh, you know we'll move on to some brighter stuff but uh, yeah that's the video guys if you guys enjoyed it please 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 check out my patreon I have some extras on there uh, you know if you you, know, you help help support uh, some cool stuff on there <laughs> and also please like the video subscribe all that crud um, yeah <sighs> you know just gonna hang out here in the East River I'm completely frozen my feet are are numb uh, got to get some new shoes here at some point uh, yeah, I don't know, Eric, what do you think? Should we go get uh, some uh, hot chocolate? <laughs> sounds, sounds very cool, very legit. Very, very off the cuff. Uh, all right, well, that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you later. Sick. <laughs>